Antonio starts right now. 74 degrees at 6 a.m. Hey, it feels a little less humid. Maybe it was some of those surprise, well not surprise, but those pop-up showers that we ended up getting overnight. Mike is in for Sarah. He's gonna have our full forecast and are we gonna see cooler temps later this week? Good morning. Good morning, guys. It's six o'clock on Sunday morning and you said it's a surprise, but not a forecasted surprise, but it was a surprise to see. Well, it's a wonderful surprise. honestly a pleasant surprise to have you here with us, John Paul Barajas. Yeah. Good to have you here. Glad to be here. First time debuting on First time debut GMSA. on the desk. And the last time I was actually, the first time I was ever on GMSA in my two years and some change was the KSAP Pigskin Classic. And that is probably our most fun show we have oh, we had all ball. year. But it's going to be a fun show this morning because not only do we have JP, but we also have Mike. Good morning. So great to always Welcome. have you. Welcome. How's it going? Yeah, that's what you get for staying up late and watching Houston play yep, last Yep, week. exactly. <laughs> yeah. And we lost. Yeah, I <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. uh, and Texas fans, of course, are just oh, elated this morning. Yeah. Over so. the moon. Yeah, the storms last night, we were talking about how there was going to be that chance for some rain. And then we were looking at it, it's like, well, are they going to hold together? And they. And I didn't they did. think it was going to happen. And then, yeah. It was late, they came a little later. Beautiful to see. So a lot of folks got some, some decent rain last night. Uh, is this the start of a change? Yes and no. First of all, got a lot of clear skies out there right now and the humidity, boy, that uh, those storms pulled in some drier air. Like uh, like Sarah said, it is so comfortable out there this morning and that's going to allow temperatures to dip down a, a few more degrees. We'll actually get down to a normal low of 71. We're at 74 right now, 78 still Stinson and Canyon Lake at 79 degrees. And look at these numbers. Now, I mean, this is not bone dry air, but you got two points in the 50s, 66. Yeah, that doesn't feel too bad at all, especially when you think last week we had these numbers were up in the low to mid 70s when it was very, very humid out there. We have a low amount of mold in the atmosphere. Of course, the update account comes out a little bit later on, and uh, it is a uh, conservation day. CPS Energy and 94 at noon. We are going to be hitting 100 today. There will be a couple of more showers and thunderstorms, primarily in the hill country. Just a little cluster out there later on. Today will be day number 74. We did, you know, we were staying kind of right upper 90s throughout much of the day yesterday, and all of a sudden we just kind of popped up to 102, a new record yesterday. We will hit 100 today. Close call tomorrow. We'll talk about more rain chances this week. I'm going to have to wait a couple of days, though. All those details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, John Paul. Thank you, Mike. People in Hondo woke up to their houses rattling after a sonic boom yesterday morning. So the FAA told Hondo police a plane flying in the area broke the sound barrier. Several people say it sounded like a tree fell on their roof. Right now, there's no word what type of plane actually triggered that sonic boom. And San Antonio Crime Stoppers need your help finding a man they say stole from a pawn shop. Police say this man stole thousands of dollars worth of jewelry from the Cash America Pawn Shop on South Cross Boulevard back in August. If you know anything about this crime, call Crime Stoppers immediately. That number is 210-224-7867, and it's on your screen. You could receive up to $5,000 for information leading to this suspect's arrest. One man is in the hospital, another is in police custody after an overnight shooting. This happened just before 10 on Friday in the 3400 block of East South Cross Boulevard. Officers say they found a 28 year old man with a gunshot wound outside of an apartment complex and as EMS arrived, a 30 year old man at Rocky's restaurant was found with an alleged stolen gun. So the man with the gun was taken into custody. Meanwhile, that victim taken to a nearby hospital for surgery. And a 40-year-old man is in jail this morning after San Antonio police suspect he was drunk when he rear-ended an officer yesterday morning. The crash happened on I-10 West Access Road near Desavala. Police say the officer was stopped at a red light when the man rear-ended him. The driver told the officer he had a few drinks before the crash. Amphetamine pills were also found inside the car. It's unknown if the officer needed any medical attention after the crash. And for the first time, people living on the west side sat down with VIA and developer Dream On to discuss the future of a building near downtown. Now, there are mixed opinions on how to turn an eyesore into a mixed space of apartments or commercial space. Camille Juarez explains the different sides on the plan. 
You've been there since 1925, so that's generations on generations that have put effort into the area. JR lives adjacent to the abandoned SCOBY storage unit located near downtown. He's one of many people invited to give input on the future of the SCOBY building. He says there are crime and drug-related issues in the area. With Haven for Hope, it's actually brought even more. So he hopes development of apartments and mixed-use retail space will bring more business to the area. We need more support for the area. We often don't get heard. We're often overlooked, and we just need a lot of support, if, especially since the city put that there. On the opposite side, organizers like Robert Hernandez believe the potential apartment units should be public housing and affordable to people earning less than 30000 a year. Poor people exist, and it's okay that they exist, and they are hard workers. But even if they work hard, work two jobs, they can't afford rent. Via purchased the property back in 2017 with intentions of turning the area into a transportation hub. We're developing it because it's part of a transit community. It's part of the combination of the headquarters building and the transit center which serves, by the way, a million passenger trips a year. In previous board meetings, VIA discussed making some apartment units affordable to people making less than 60000 a portion of units at market rate, and open the building to commercial space. VIA president and CEO Jeff Arndt says nothing is set in stone just yet. We are not ironclad into any design, which is why we can meet today, take in, into consideration other folks' vote, uh, views, and then work with Dream On because Dream On is a developer, not VIA. And if Dream On can't make it work or can make it work, that's going to be their decision. Today's meeting was an invite only workshop, and VIA says there will be other opportunities to give feedback. Kamala Juarez, Case at 12 News. And looking ahead, tomorrow, Police Chief Lloyd McManus and District Attorney Joe Gonzalez will be at a District 4 Public Safety Town Hall. So that town hall is scheduled to start at 6 at St. Rose of Lima Catholic Church. It's on Marbach Road, and we plan to live stream it on all of our KSAT platforms. Definitely looking forward to see what happens there. Now, driver's license offices around Texas are planning to reopen tomorrow after being closed for more than a week. The Texas Department of Public Safety began changing their computer system back on September 1st, but they underestimated how long the upgrade would take. Anyone who had an appointment between September 5th through the 8th and hasn't rescheduled yet is asked to email Texas DPS customer service with your name and preferred driver's license office for help. 607 and 74 degrees. All right, taking a look at live cam. I've never taken a look at live cam at 6 a.m., but you <laughs> yeah, know, it looks pretty. It's, it's nice it's to look at. Twinkling skies, it's dark out there, but hey, a little less humid this morning, and Mike will tell us about those cooler temps heading our way in a couple of days. But first, people are having a hard time finding COVID-19 testing kits, all due to the increase in demand after recent spikes in infections. Still ahead, what pharmacists are saying. Okay, we are in September, which means Halloween decorations are already being seen on shelves at your local stores, this time at your local HEB. And HEB is now selling 10-foot skeletons for Halloween. They cost $260 plus tax. So if you've been on the hunt for a giant skeleton for your Halloween decor, look no further. HEB has you covered. I think they jumped on that because last year, or was it last year, two years ago, like Home Depot, those yeah. huge skeletons, no one could find one? Mm -hmm. Did you get one? No, I didn't. I'm surprised you don't have one. I was thinking about <laughs> it. I, I, I was thinking He's about Mr. it. He's Mr. Halloween. But this it's, but good, it's uh, I don't to put in your garden. Oh, I think it's like, <laughs> my house is like so small and be like, ah! <laughs> Have it like sitting on top of the house, the giant skeleton. Oh, that would be cute. Yeah. Then I have to get my husband on the roof to like, no, I was just thinking about that. that it it's all going in. to be your husband watching right now going extra work. No, no anyway, ideas. Add it to the to-do list. <laughs> put about, it down. what, three weeks? I always go for October 1st. Or when right when to decorations? Put up, to put up Halloween. Oh, yeah, my so, God. I know. It's, it's going to be around the corner. It doesn't feel like it, though. I know. So, yes, <laughs> we did hit 100 again yesterday, and it's going to be up there again today. Uh, quick correction, it is a green day as far as CPS energy conservation, and you can scan that QR code to get more information about that and uh yeah we racked up 73 73 days as of yesterday as triple digits and we're going to hit it again today so we're talking about hitting uh, 74 tomorrow's going to be a very close call 
I'm leaning toward not hitting 100, but like I said, very close call. Last night it was absolutely gorgeous for folks that did get some of the uh, rain, and yeah, it was fairly noisy last night too with those storms that moved on through here. Now we've got just very clear skies, that drier air after those uh, those nice little pockets of rain moved on through. It was a very narrow band right from the hill country, moved right down to the south, and uh, parts of say right around Blanco County picked up a good. Uh, say inch and a half, almost two and a half inches of rain up there just to the west of Marble Falls, a little bit closer down in toward the uh, metropolitan area, right around northern Bear County, just over an inch of rain, uh, almost four tenths of an inch out there at the airport. You can see on the uh, south side, about an inch was picked up. These are some of the estimates from uh, from radar and then, you know, anywhere from half inch, two thirds, three quarters of an inch of rain. So it was nice to see. And the nice thing about this, too, was that path that that followed was pretty much where some of the most severe drought is right now. So that helped out. Obviously not a drought breaker, but it sure was nice to see. Now we've got the dry air, the cooler air. So we're right around going to bottom out right around normal low 70s this morning, but we will warm up very quickly already up to 94 at noon. Like I said, going for 100 today and there's that chance of rain. Now this is for the hill country not for really the rest of us. Here's what's going on with the computer models. You can see by uh, late afternoon dinner time, we start to see a few of those showers and thunderstorms popping up out there to the west. They're pretty much going to be confined out to the west today. Then those will die down tomorrow throughout most of the day. Nothing going on. However, we're still in this northwesterly flow, so that's a good thing. You get these little disturbances moving on through here, kind of like was the case last night and in the wee hours this morning. And another batch of those showers and thunderstorms are going to then try to develop late tomorrow night into early Tuesday morning. Then we jump ahead and go in toward the end of the week. Now, it's not going to be great rain chances really through the first portion of the week. But once we get into Thursday and then especially Friday and going overnight into Saturday, that looks like it's going to be some of the better chances for a few showers and a couple of thunderstorms around here, plus those lower temperatures, because we've been talking about that front that's going to be lying in the area. Well, right now, like I said, we've got the sort of northwesterly flow. Give us those little rogue showers and storms. We will hit 100 today. Tomorrow, 98. It's going to be real close call. Still on the warm side, although down considerably. Seems kind of funny we're going to be happy about 96s and 95s, but uh, we'll get a quick little peak of uh, heat up on Thursday, but then Friday, Saturday, better rain chances around here. Remember when we were discussing if we would break the record of triple digits? Oh, the, the total number? And then we yeah. just shattered it and completely. Just like, where was the old record? Somewhere back there, <laughs> yeah. Was it in the 60s or something like that? Yeah, oh, 59, 59. Was, the, was the old record, yeah. Wow. wow. Going way above that. Not a good record to, I don't think, have on hand. So. Absolutely well, not. At least we're first in something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm just focusing on the temps this week. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. All right, 615 and 74 degrees. All right, treating yourself to a nice self-care day may include getting your nails done. There's nothing I'd like more, but in all seriousness, it's important to know about the safety precautions surrounding it after the break, which you can do to avoid a nail infection. Well, some of us love getting pedicures. Do you get pedicures? You pedicure I don't. Guy? Is pedicures one for the toes? Yeah, yeah, the feet. I've, do I've done that one before. Okay. Well, some of us love to get them, <laughs> but certain nail treatments can be dangerous to your health if not handled properly. Mandy Gaither with CNN explains how to avoid infections at the nail salon. A pampering pedicure can help melt the stress away, but before you get your toes done, do your research. Potential dangers for pedicures can include infection of the toenail area. It can include infection of the skin around the toenail. Podiatrist Joy Rowland with Cleveland Clinic says to keep feet healthy, be aware of three types of infection, fungal-like athlete's foot, bacterial of the toenail or toenail unit, and viral like plantar warts. If you end up getting an infection of any one of these things, it can progress and cause more serious infection. Roland says the first thing to do is to pre-screen the salon, make sure instruments are sterilized. You wanna make sure that in between clients, 
the bowls are being disinfected. She says proper technique matters. Cutting toenails too short can result in an ingrown toenail or infection. When it comes to callus removal, skip the metal scraper, which can cut into the skin, and skip shaving, which can also create cuts. You want to wait at least 24 hours before you go to the salon and without shaving your legs. Signs of infection include whiteness of the toenail, yellow flaky or crumbly nail, redness, pinkness, or swelling of the nail. See a doctor if you have any of these symptoms. Roland also recommends giving your toes a break. Wait for another one or two weeks and let your toenails essentially breathe. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Well, doctors may soon have new technology to diagnose autism in children quicker and more accurately. So two studies released this week suggest an eye tracking tool could actually diagnose autism in children as young as 16 months old. So it was recently cleared by the FDA to help doctors intervene earlier than ever before. Experts at the Marcus Autism Center in Atlanta say it could represent a major step forward. People across the country are having trouble finding at-home COVID tests amid a recent spike in cases, but pharmacies and manufacturers say there's not a shortage of tests. Major chains are reporting an increase in testing kit sales, and they, they have the inventory to meet the needs of customers. Manufacturers are putting the blame on the sudden increase in demand, not a slump in production. Free COVID testing sites are still available nationwide and can be found on the CDC's website. 622 and 74 degrees. So two unique things that were found by a seven-year-old and other by a Goodwill employee. We'll tell you about both of them after the break, including why Goodwill employee had to call police after making that discovery. Now to an unusual donation at a Goodwill in Arizona that now has police investigating. Take a look at your screen. This is a picture of a skull that was found inside a box of items. The skull was sent off to the medical examiner's office and it turns out it's real, but doesn't seem to be part of a crime. It appears to be a part of some historic ancient remains. Police say they'll continue their investigation. As for the person who donated the skull, no criminal charges are being filed. Ooh, terrifying. Okay, a seven-year-old girl got a pretty big birthday present after she found, oh my gosh, lucky girl, a nearly three carat diamond at Crater of Diamond State Park in Arkansas. So the park is well known for being a place where visitors can find diamonds. Of course, most don't. So Aspen Brown found the pea-sized brown diamond near the park's fence line. Park officials say it was probably unearthed when a contractor dug a trench in August. This is the park's second largest diamond discovered this year, but does she get to keep it? I, I'm assuming yes, right? Our producer says finder I, keepers, so. Yeah, exactly. I'm just happy when I find $5 in my pocket after doing some laundry. Well, see, <laughs> that girl never has to rely on a fiance. So she's, to, she's, got her, she's already got her diamonds. Yeah, that's, that's e she's got the easiest part. Yeah, I like <laughs> women's keeping their standards high. Yeah. I like to see it. Love there you go. It. All right, your time is 626 in the morning, 74 degrees, guys. We'll be right back. Welcome back at 6.30 on Sunday. Happy to be here with you, Sarah. Thank you for sh for joining us September Sunday, September 10th. Hey, did you get any rain at your place? Not that I know of. Right before I went to sleep. Do you live near downtown? I'm, I, I'm assuming. Yeah. South, okay. <laughs> south town area. Not that I'm aware of. I did see a lot of thunder and lightning. Okay. But then I, but then I went to bed because oh. I had to be up here bright and early with you guys. Well, not bright. Not yet, at least. Well, we're happy that you're here. Hey, Mike. I kind of given up on the rain yesterday, and then around 10.30 at my house, I was like, is that thunder? Mm -hmm. It was nice. Yeah, well, it was fantastic. Yeah, right around 10, 10.30, really started uh, firing up here in town. The nice thing is they did hold together because we were watching those storms, obviously that cluster up in uh, northern parts of the hill country, and yeah, that thing held together very nicely. Picked up just shy of four-tenths of an inch out there at the airport. Some folks picked up even in and around town up to three quarters, maybe an inch of rain, a little bit more further up to the north. Also, it has pulled in some very pleasant air in behind that. We're at 74 right now, a couple of clouds out there, and and that dew point temperature, which has actually gone up a couple of degrees in the past few hours, but that's not in the mid 60s. You like it to be below 60, but still, that's not bad at all. You step outside going out to, to early church services. It's going to be beautiful out there. 100 for a high temperature. We did hit 102 yesterday. We are going to be up there again today. Now it's going to be a real close call whether this is the last 100 we see this week.
More on that coming up. The aquifer went up three tenths of a foot and the allergens mold is on the low side. All right, the reason for the uh, showers, thunderstorms last night, if you look at the water vapor imagery, notice that uh, that batch of moisture that kind of blew up right there. That was the uh, the cluster of storms that then blew up, but also what you take note of is this northwesterly flow in the atmosphere. So with that, and think back even a month, couple of months ago when we had some of these showers, you get these little disturbances to pop up, and they just like to ride down in here. So that's what we're hoping for today as well, primarily out in the hill country where we have the chance for a few scattered showers and storms. So mostly clear, pleasant, good looking sunrise on tap and hot today and triple digits. Like I said, scattered hill, scattered storms in the hill country. Then we go into the first part of the week. Tomorrow, going for 98 for a high temperature. But again, really close call whether we do hit day number 75 with the triple digit temperatures and a stray storm or two. We'll drop then a couple of degrees going into the middle portion of the week. Then we get into the latter part of the week and we'll dip down to the low 90s and we have better rain chances later on late in the week and going into the first part of next weekend. All those details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, JP. Thanks, Mike. The San Antonio Fire Department is recovering this morning after fighting two fires on the same street on the west side just minutes apart. Those two house fires happened last night and were only blocks apart on San Eduardo Avenue. Our Everett was there as crews put out both fires. It's getting more and more smoke and you can't even see the house anymore. And then uh, the flames start shooting out. You see the Martha flames? Garcia says in just minutes, she could no longer see across the 900 block of San Eduardo Avenue. Everybody got out safe, thank God. It was, it happened so fast. Her friend's home was covered in smoke, catching fire from what crews say was likely electrical. No one was hurt, but fire crews say the home's damage is widespread. Significantly now throughout the house because of the time lapse of what we were waiting on. Fire crews here at this house say they had some difficulties responding to the fire because they were already tied up just a few blocks down the same street, handling a fire there just minutes before. It's very freak nature that we make two structure fires on the same street just blocks apart. At this house fire in the 400 block, everyone got out safe too. The cause is still being investigated and it took 40 minutes for the crews to get the fire under control. But SAFD says that took time away from the house just blocks away. The one that would respond here, we're still at the other San Eduardo address. Crews put out both fires by sunset, but neighbors say it's a site on San Eduardo they won't be able to forget. There's just too many houses catching on fire right now with the, with the hot weather. SAFD says three of their crews actually ended up covering both of those fires, starting in the 400 block and then moving to the 900 block. The battalion chief says it was a long day, but one that saved lives. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. And San Antonio firefighters had their hands full yesterday afternoon because they also dealt with a fire inside a commercial building. The fire broke out on Colwick Street, and that commercial building did contain lithium batteries. It took the firefighters 40 minutes to put out the flames. A hazmat team was called due to those batteries burning, but luckily there were no injuries reported. And another house fire at a home on East Highland Boulevard was contained after an electrical bike battery sparked the flame. So fire investigators on scene say the homeowner closed the door connecting to the house to the garage once she noticed the fire. And they say that's what prevented those flames from actually spreading the rest of the home. There were no injuries reported. The death toll unimaginable this morning in Morocco following a powerful earthquake. So more than 2,000 people have been confirmed dead, another 2,000 people with injuries. This is the most powerful earthquake that hit the African country in 120 years. Chuck Severson has the latest from those terrifying moments. No, go, 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 go. Terrifying moments as a 6.8 magnitude earthquake struck Morocco late Friday night. Many running for safety from restaurants and from their homes. Another camera also capturing the moment the quake hit, causing dust and debris to crumble as people tried to get away. The heaviest damage is in Morocco's Atlas Mountains, the epicenter about 45 miles south of Marrakesh. The ancient city home to almost a million people and popular with tourists. The room started shaking, there's no other way. We was going backwards and forwards and everything started moving. Many buildings in the area were not designed to withstand earthquakes and suffered severe damage, and many were destroyed. Many people sleeping outside concerned about aftershocks. 
there is a lot of damage that happened to a lot of buildings. Some of them are mosques, some of them are houses. A lot of communities got hurt. One survivor in Moulay Ibrahim captured video of the destruction, a walkway now blocked by piles of concrete and other debris. Roads leading to some hard-hit remote mountain villages are also littered with large boulders, making it difficult for rescuers to get through. Rescue crews now desperately searching for any survivors who might be buried in the rubble. The injured being transported to hospitals in the region, some taken away by helicopter. The death toll expected to rise. This man says a family of six died in the quake. Residents in this small village already burying the dead. Chuck Sievertson, ABC News, New York. A baby that was accidentally locked inside a car was rescued thanks to the quick reaction of Flower Mound firefighters and police officers. It was all caught on camera. The Dallas ABC affiliate WFAA reports the car was fortunately was still running, but first responders could not force those doors open. Officers quickly pivoted and decided to break a window to recover the baby who was taken into an ambulance to cool off. Well, the family of a woman who was shot and killed during a road rage incident is asking for the public's help for any information leading to the shooter's arrest. So 37-year-old Paula Nunes Linares died after she was shot in the head on July 10th in Dallas as she was riding in the passenger seat with her husband, who was the one driving. So the family is offering a $10,000 reward to anyone who has any information on the shooting. They do have a page where you can leave tips. You can find that at my name was Paula on Facebook.com. 27-year-old Omar Galvan Ochoa has been arrested in connection to a deadly shooting at a gas station in Hayes County. According to the Hayes County Sheriff's Office, they received a call about a man unresponsive near gas pumps at the Instafield Travel Center in Buda. Galvan Ochoa is being charged with murder and evading arrest with a vehicle. It's 638 and 74 degrees. After the break, we go behind the gates at JBSA Lackland to learn about highly skilled airmen who are protecting the base and much more. Oh, it was such a relief to get some of those showers overnight. Less humidity this morning at 74 degrees, but Mike says we are not quite over with the heat today, but in just a couple of days, we'll see those cooler temps. He'll explain when we come back. Well, now we go behind the gates of JBSA Lackland to a group of highly trained and skilled airmen protecting the base, the city, and our country by taking on threats. Jonathan Goto takes us front and center into the high stakes world of EOD technicians. Yeah, you can pull. Really, uh, Air Force and the U.S. in particular didn't really begin uh, explosive ordnance disposal operations until about the 40s, mid 40s. Hank says it was actually the British that were the first generation of explosive ordnance technicians. Uh, prior to that, explosives have been around since the 10th century. Technology quickly advancing and weaponry becoming more and more complex. The American Armed Forces understood the demand for EOD. They created this profession, uh, bomb disposal. Uh, technicians and they basically were the guys charged with going out there and removing these fuses and making these bombs safe uh, to move and eventually dispose of. Senior Airman David Ethan Lane says the core mission is always aircraft support. So that involves dealing with in-flight emergencies when they land. If it has to do with ordnance, uh, we'll go safe the aircraft. That way the maintainers can figure out what went wrong and then we can generate sorties and do all that air power stuff. Serving as the Air Force's bomb squad, these EOD technicians work in the most extreme of conditions and environments. A critical and tactical component in maintaining air superiority. So global war on terror, the enemy started using improvised explosive devices a lot. And so we became a core uh, component to the mission because without us, we didn't have freedom of movement. We couldn't do anything with those IEDs blowing up everywhere. So that is kind of where EOD came really into the spotlight. JBSA Lackland's EOD supports the entire South Texas area, 57 counties and 14 military installations. 
training numerous times throughout the year with civilian bomb squads on interoperability. That way, in case we get called out on a, like, let's say somebody's uncle died and they have a couple of ordnance items in their, in their house, if we have to go and assist them, they'll know exactly how we work and we know exactly how they work. Every branch of the military has their designated emergency ordnance disposal teams. Our badge is a four, it's all four services, Navy, Marines, Air Force, and the Army. Uh, we all go to the same school and we uh, get the same base uh, education and schooling. Technicians undergo a 10-month rigorous training period. We're supposed to be training about 16 to 20 hours a week uh, before the guys that come here fresh out of school. Um, they're, they're training every single day uh, for about 7 to 10 hours a day. EOD teams working with the latest cutting-edge technology. We have two new robot systems that are brand new to the career field, to the actual um, the whole military. Robot systems that allow technicians to operate completely remote. And that way we don't have to go ourselves down onto a suspicious item or on a suspicious package. We're one of the uh, career fields that really embraces technology and, and incorporates it into our daily life and then especially into our operations. So that's been a big part of it and then just getting smarter doing things more remote and safer is always the goal. For EOD technicians there are only two options. Initial success or total failure. So we need experts that are able to identify the problem, render it safe, and mitigate the hazard. Um, and without us, I'm not sure who would do that in the Air Force. Final! Reporting front and center. Final! Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Wow, I love that kind of look behind the curtain mm -hmm. that Jonathan gives us with these, these stories. Amazing work that they do, it's incredible. Initial success or total failure, wow. Oof. Glad they're on our Thank team. you. Thank yeah, you, guys. God bless the folks that sit there and there's some, oh, let me go in there and take care of it. Absolutely. Right. Hey, wow. All right. Um, we've got more chances for rain in the forecast. Okay. Now, th it was very limited yesterday. Some folks that got rain, that was wonderful. Most of it's going to be in the Hill Country today, and then we'll have improving rain chances as the week goes on. Okay. Still, it's going to be hot the next couple of days. It will be uh, definitely on the hot side today. There's uh, another view. A lot of folks sending some beautiful pictures of all of that gorgeous lightning yesterday and some of the rain. Just under uh, four tenths of an inch officially out there at the airport. Most of it was right up pretty much 281 and then uh, south of there coming in through Bear County and then they finally did die down. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous sunrise on tap. Lots of clear skies out there right now and also fairly dry air. Now we've got a temperature of 74, normal low 71, so we're getting close to it and the dew point temperatures are down in the 60s. Now this is still you know, you like to get below 60. That's that threshold number. But when you're in the mid 60s, as opposed to low to mid 70s, like we were last week, this ain't bad at all. So if you are heading out this morning, um, early brunch, maybe early church services, it's very nice. As a matter of fact, compared to this time yesterday, dew points are down seven degrees here in town, 14 degrees lower over there for you folks in Uvalde and 12 lower in uh, Kerrville. So yeah, nice dry air that's moved in place. It will come back up ever so slightly. The humidity will late this morning, right around noontime. Then we'll see it drop down in the afternoon. So it will be once again a relatively comfortable afternoon in the shade. Temperatures. We continue to drop down a couple of more notches here and then warm up very quickly up to the mid 90s, low to mid 90s already at noon. We are going to top off at 100 today. There's that 40% chance of rain, but the qualifier for this is it's in the hill country. That's going to be kind of confined, the confined space, if you will, as far as where the rain is, which is what computer models are picking up. We get a few of those showers and storms developing late this afternoon into early evening hours. They'll last through the evening and then start to uh, die off. Now, tomorrow, yeah, there's a chance for a couple of showers here or there. Not a great shot at rain, but tomorrow night, a couple of computer models are picking up this cluster of storms, which is going to try and develop. And notice how everything's coming in here out of the northwest. So that's what uh, is on the, the benefit for us, I guess you could say, is that we do have this northwesterly flow. So you get these little disturbances moving on in here, and that's what gives us these stray, even though it's not widespread, but stray showers and storms. Now, we have to jump ahead to Thursday because this will be the better chance for the next round of rain. Just scattered variety, first part of next week. So that's going to be Thursday, and then it looks like the better chance of rain will be Friday into Saturday of next week as we have that cool front sort of lying in a, the vicinity. The high, which had been sitting on top of us, continues to sort of work its way off to the west, 
and weaken ever so slightly. And then this trough is developing out there in the Great Lakes. That's what's going to try and push that front down in our direction. It's going to be tough to do, which is usually the case with these things this early in the season, but that will finally lie in the area close enough by the latter part of the week. And that's what's going to give us that better rain chance by the latter part of the week. So 100 today going to be a real close call tomorrow. Today, by the way, will be day number 74 this year of triple digit high temperatures at the airport 98 tomorrow mid 90s through the middle part of the week and eh, rain chances not that great they start to pick up later thursday friday saturday and then low 90s oh i hope this is the last 100 so we're flirting with that 100 at on monday but yet it we'll, should be towards the end of triple digits hopefully yes oh we hope we hope yes that's the way things are are now shaping up that come on be, fall <laughs> Fall. <laughs> Only uh, like nearly halfway through September now. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. 650 and 74 degrees. We have the latest in sports, including the big win with UTSA football after the break. Take a look outside with the roads with Transguy. You can see some people getting an early start to their Sunday. That sunrise starting to peep up at that shot there. We don't see any incidents around the road on around the roads. If we do, we'll let you know about them. The Battle of I-35 drew in the second largest crowd in UTSA history with fans eager to make sense of what both teams did in week one of the Roadrunners with Roadrunners dropping a heartbreaker in Houston and Texas State upsetting Baylor. Now second quarter, Rocco Griffin with speed. Let's get that highlight up. We're trying to get that to you. Well, we know he gets there with speed and he scores a 20 yard touchdown and the Roadrunners go up 10. And Bobcats then answer the call before halftime and Jamil Jeters, or Jeters, stretches out for six and tied the game at 10, coming out of half. Now we're getting to some highlights. Now QB Frank Harris tosses a dime to Willie McCoy in the back of the end zone, and that proved to be the game winner. UTSA defeats the Bobcats 20 to 13. And the Texas Longhorns took the field to a round of boos from the Alabama fans, as expected. But what wasn't expected were plays like this from the Texas offense. Quinn Ewers throwing a bomb to Xavier Worthy for a 44-yard touchdown to take the lead in the second quarter. In the third quarter, the Tide said, well, we can do that too. Jalen Melrow finds Jermaine Burton in the same end zone for a 49-yard TD. But eventually, horns up, Longhorns would go on to win it. 34-24. Wasn't just football happening yesterday. Coco Goff has won her first Grand Slam title at the age of 19 at the U.S. Open. Goff defeating Arena Sablinka in the U.S. Open final. She was down. The first set came back and won in three sets. She's the first teenager to win the country's major tennis tournament since Serena Williams did this in 1999. The win has been expected of Goff ever since she burst onto the scene when she was just 15. She became the youngest qualifier in Wimbledon history. I watched this yesterday, did not think she was going to win. What a comeback and such a mature young woman. How she spoke after the match. Uh, she ran up to her dad, started crying. I was crying. She was like, this is the first time I've ever seen my dad cry, but she's very mature. And I look forward to see what her future holds for her. You love to see them, the success on the court there, mm -hmm. but also just the humbleness. She was so gracious yeah. afterwards yeah. and even had just wonderful things to say about her opponent. And um, the commentators are saying she is very well loved, not just, you know, by the fans, but also in the locker room by the other players. Well, she's going to be loved by a lot more people after winning. That's yeah. for sure. <laughs> it's 656 and 74 degrees. We'll be right back. All right, we are going to rack up another triple digit day today. A beautiful start. We had some of that rain last night, pulled in some drier air, so it's really comfortable if you're heading out this morning to uh, early church services. 73 degrees right now, 70 up the road in comfort. And throughout the rest of today, we will make it up to 94 at noon, 100. Now, a couple of uh, storms, primarily in the hill country today, just kind of uh, scattered here and there late this afternoon into this evening. One or two of them the next couple of days. It's going to be a close call as far as whether we do actually hit 100 tomorrow, then we'll stay right around mid 90s, middle portion of the week. Again, a stray storm here or there. Then the better rain chances come in here later Thursday, Friday, as well as Saturday, and temperatures finally getting down into the low 90s. Focusing on that 90 on Saturday. Yeah. 90s yeah. and rain chances. Love that. Love to see yeah. it. Yeah.
Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. Thank you, John Paul. Be back. Both of you guys gracing me. Thanks for joining us, guys. Hey, we'll see you at 8 a.m. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. An overnight house fire had several fire departments responding. How long fire crews were out there and what we're learning this morning about a home that was on fire in Terrell Hills. It's haunting, it's taunting, it's harassing. Residents in Hutto, Texas are outraged over a racial comment made to their mayor during a city council meeting. We'll take a look at that situation coming up. 74 degrees at 8 a.m. on this beautiful Sunday morning. Oh, that rain that we got last night, that some of us got last night, was amazing. Could there be more scattered showers in our forecast? And when are we finally going to see those lower temps? Mike is in for Sarah, and he'll let us know in just a bit. Good morning, guys. It's 8 o'clock on Sunday, September 10th. The NFL season is underway. I'm, I'm pumped. I know. Um, I love it when NFL season comes around. Um, my, my neighbor, we're a big Cowboys house, but my neighbors, I know like when the Cowboys are going to play because they put the Cowboy flag out. And I was like, all right, let's <laughs> go. Represent. Go you Cowboys. Hey, but Mike, this weather, like the, it's, I walked out this morning and I was like, oh my gosh. It feels like briefly fall is here with this lower humidity. <laughs> But maybe not later today. Compared to what we've had been, yeah. this does feel like fall, even though we're still well above normal. Uh, yeah, by the way, the NFL season did start Thursday night. Hmm, who played in that game? Your Lions, by chance? Huh? Are you roaring loud enough over there for your Lions? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, take a look outside right now, and you can see that we do have a temperature of 75 degrees. That bottom number, dew point, was actually down about 62, 63 earlier this morning. It has come up somewhat, so there is a bit more humidity. But yeah, earlier this morning, it felt great out there. That dry air got pulled in uh, thanks to some of those storms that moved through late last night. Temperatures all around the area, 68 Comfort, uh, 75 there, Port SA, 77 Stinson, Divine. And then the humidity now, it's starting to really come back in here around New Braunfels, Canyon Lake. So it's going to be peaking a little bit throughout the morning hours and then dropping back down. Later on this afternoon, we do have a low amount of mold still waiting for the updated count to come in this morning. And uh, yeah, mostly clear and pleasant this morning. But then, like I said, a little bit of a rise in the humidity that'll drop down. It's going to be hot. We are going to be hitting 100 again today. A couple of scattered thunderstorms in parts of the hill country. Unlike last night where they came right down through here in town, it'll be off to the west and just a few of them out there. Then down a couple of degrees. Now it's going to be a close call tomorrow as far as triple digits. And then hanging right around mid 90s throughout the middle portion of the week, a storm or two by the end of the week. We do have those better rain chances as well as mid to lower 90s for high temperatures. All those details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, JP. Thank you, Mike. Several fire departments responding to a house that was on fire in Terrell Hill. So working several hours to put out those flames. So crews from Terrell Hills, Alamo Heights, Fort Sam, Almost Park responded to initial call about a transformer being struck by lightning. But take a look at that video on your screen right now. This happened around 10 p.m. last night on Wiltshire Avenue. Crews not only found that that transformer had blown, but also a home that was behind that transformer station had caught on fire where its AC system had been overheated. And the fire started behind the home near that transformer and spread throughout the whole house that fire destroying the entire home. Right now, we know the crews are still monitoring it for hotspots. Luckily, there were no injuries. And a busy day for firefighters across the area. The San Antonio Fire Department is recovering this morning after fighting two fires on the same street on the west side just minutes apart. Those two houses, those house fires happened last night on San Eduardo Avenue, one in the 400 block and the other on the 900 block. It took 40 minutes for the crews to get the fire under control. And neighbors say it's a site they'll never forget. Very freak nature that we make two structure fires on the same street just blocks apart. There's just too many houses catching on fire right now with the, with the hot weather. Crews put out both fires by sunset. The cause is still being investigated, and it's unclear at this time if the two fires are linked. The battalion chief called it a long day, but one that saved lives. Now to Hutto, Texas. Citizens are outraged over what they're calling a racial innuendo that went unchecked 
by the mayor at a recent city council meeting. So while addressing council members, Nicole Calderon, a Hutto resident who has ran for public office multiple times, gifted an African-American mayor, Mike Snyder, a monkey basket. It also had bananas in it. So let's listen to the comment that left the Hutto community feeling shocked. This is for you, Mayor. It's a symbol. And I'm one of the many monkeys who keep trying to climb the ladder for bananas, regardless of how many times other monkeys try to pull me down and beat me up. Calderon says she was aware of the racial implications that the prop may have had, but she says intentionally she wrote her remarks in a quote saying inclusive manner and was only using it as an example the mayor gave previously about striving for a better huddo. Mayor Snyder has no comment on this situation. A report from the Texas Education Agency says that 13 percent of Texas teachers left their jobs last year, which is the highest number on record. This means nearly 50,000 left out of the almost half million teachers across the state. And a survey from TEA shows that roughly 70 percent of teachers were seriously considering quitting their teaching jobs in 2022. Educators say they feel burned out from pandemic related stress, political pressure from state lawmakers, less support from parents and financial burdens. Well, State Representative Carl Sherman is announcing he is running for U.S. Senate, becoming the latest Democrat to challenge Senator Ted Cruz. So Sherman is a pastor, jumped in the race, calling for higher salaries for police officers and more hospitals in rural areas of the state. He joins a primary that already includes two prominent Democrats, Colin Allred and Dallas and Senator Roland Gutierrez of San Antonio. And in a statement released by Sherman's team, he says, quote, Texas needs a United States senator who will stand up for all of us, our children, our families, small business owners, and the working people of Texas. We need more good paying jobs right here in Texas, not just jobs, but good paying jobs, end quote. The FAA has not yet cleared another test launch for the SpaceX mega rocket since the explosion in Boca Chica, Texas earlier this spring. Elon Musk posted on social media, Starship is ready for launch and is awaiting FAA license approval. The FAA announced this weekend that it's closed its investigation on what happened in Boca Chica, saying their recent test flights have found the root causes of the blast. The FAA is asking SpaceX to take 63 specific corrective actions to prevent the explosion from happening again. Okay, our awesome weather authorities here at KSET say this could possibly be the last weekend of triple digit degree days. So what means the holiday season right around the corner? Can you believe it? <laughs> Mike's laughing over there. In San Antonio, that means the mala time. So if your appetite for tamales can't wait, food organizations around San Antonio teamed up with local grocery stores to see what the best store, store bought. Again, I'm saying this store bought tamales <laughs> are in the city and we did not make this list. This was put on by a bunch of local organizations and a grocery store. So here are your top three. In first place, Sprouts Market Corner Beef Tamales with the red sauce are apparently the most delicious and affordable option. In second place, straight out of Arizona, we have the Tucson Tamale Green Chile Pork and Cheese. These can be found at Walmart, of all places. And then third place, Madrina Tamales with Pork. You can find these at Central Market. I have had those. Those are pretty good. So we wanted to include an honorable mention. HEB's Deli Pork Tamales came in fourth. What, what do you think? Have you had any of these? I have not. Okay. I think there's a lot of restaurants, not a, a lot of abuelitas and tias. Right. That would have a lot more to say about this. I, and I know you emphasize store-bought. Store-bought. We need to get the people who did that survey here in San Antonio. at the store? I mean, I think that's a last Walmart? minute. Walmart? Are you going to buy Walmart the Mollus? If I'm going to go out and buy something, I might go to Delias. Right. Delias is good. If you buy something. If I buy something. But if I get some homemade stuff. But you don't want to cheat on your, like, my in laws. Oh. My mother in law. Yeah. No, she's, we, we have the Mollus. She's the one making you gotta, them. <laughs> you got to eat other people's the Mollus in secrecy. Right. Absolutely. Right. Right. <laughs> All right, guys. It is 8.09 and it's 75 degrees. You can't stop the clock. Your body is going to age. Coming up, we'll hear from doctors on the best way to stay healthy. As we age, maybe not so many tamales. <laughs> no. And speaking of staying healthy, we have the latest news from the CDC on how to deal with COVID-19 as we get ready for flu season. Well, the FDA is expected to approve the latest COVID-19 vaccine possibly this week. 
This comes as confirmed cases of the virus are inching upward and some health officials expect that trend to continue into the fall and winter. CDC officials are advising people to stay up to date with your COVID-19 vaccines to improve indoor ventilation and to get tested when appropriate and to stay home when you're sick. We have a 19% increase over the last couple of weeks in hospitalization. I would imagine we're going to see an increase as we get into the fall. Health officials are recommending the elderly and people with compromised health to consider wearing a mask while in public, but nothing is mandated. And nearly 56 million Americans are 65 and older, according to the National Council on Aging. Staying healthy is critical to an independent life and a good quality of life, but many seniors struggle with everyday challenges. So in today's Health Minute, Mandy Gaither has five tips to promote health as we get older in honor of Healthy Aging Month. A long life is a blessing and sometimes a curse. You can't stop the clock. Your body is going to age. Dr. Kenneth Concilia with Cleveland Clinic says as the years go by, the changing body allows for more health problems, but there are healthy ways to age. His first tip, get daily exercise. Commit to being active every day, but choose to do something you enjoy. Commitments to exercise or, or promises to yourself only become a habit if it's something that you're going to that you're going to be able to do that you're going to love doing. Eating a healthy diet with lots of fruits and veggies and limiting alcohol, processed foods and red meats is key. Kinsilia says it's also critical to continue learning. Reading books, learning new things, learning an instrument, singing, learning a new language, learning a new hobby. These things are all great exercises for your brain. This can also help with staying social, another boost for your brain. Finally, Concilia says to focus on getting those Z's. Making sure that we're not watching the TV as we're falling asleep, but that we're trying to get at least six to seven hours of good quality sleep at night um, undisturbed. That's very important for your brain health and for your, um, for your overall physiology. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Doctors are also saying it's important for seniors to keep good relationships with their primary care physician, to do routine checkups and screenings to catch any health issues early. And a look at live cam. Sun is out. Beautiful day here in San Antonio. Only a couple hours away from Sunday NFL kickoff. Kickoff, but for people trying to cook out. What can they expect, Mike? Uh, it, it's going to be another hot day today. Now, we did start off with lower humidity earlier this morning. It started to come back up a little bit. It'll drop down somewhat this afternoon. But, yes, it is going to be another hot one, unfortunately. If you are cooking out later on this afternoon out in the hill country, you may get a couple of uh, showers, thunderstorms to pop up out there like we had here in town and up around Blanco County, Gillespie County. Last night, we were watching that cluster of storms. And, boy, it held together very nicely. A lot of times those like to die down once the sun goes down, but you know, they came through here in town right around 10, 10, 30, 11 o'clock ish out at the airport officially just shy of uh, four tenths of an inch of rain, but in and around Bear County, anywhere from two thirds, three quarters, close to an inch of rain and upwards of two inches of rain further on up to the north. And then we had the drier air in behind that to start off this morning. Lots of clear skies out there. It is a beautiful, beautiful morning here. Let's quick check of the, uh, the trial. Topics. First of all, as you saw when this looped on through, there's the, that cluster of clouds that brought us the, uh, the storms late last night. This is uh, Hurricane Lee, which is now back down to a Category 2 storm. It did weaken a little bit. It had gained Category 5 strength at one point. It's continuing to work its way to the west, northwest, probably re-strengthened somewhat. Then it's going to get uh, kind of caught up in the upper level steering winds, and that's going to take it, and it's going to do almost a kind of a dog leg up to the to the right, heading on up to the north. Still going to have to watch it there along the Atlantic seaboard, especially up, say, uh, Carolinas, Virginia, north of there, just with some higher surf. But this is still forecast to uh, work its way off and stay out at sea. But obviously, it's going to be some pretty high surf up there at all the uh, computer models. 
spaghetti models have it heading up in there in toward maybe toward uh, Newfoundland and uh, further up into far eastern Canada. All right, temperatures will continue to warm up. Continuing up through the 80s the rest of the morning, we're going to make it up to 94 today at noon, and then we are going to top off at 100. So today, today is going to be day number 74 of the triple digit days. Whether we hit 75 tomorrow, it's going to be a really, really close call. Here's the chance for some of those showers and thunderstorms then late this afternoon in the hill country, not really anywhere else. And that's what the, when you look at computer models, what they are showing. We had this northwesterly flow in the atmosphere, so that's a good thing as far as getting these little disturbances to move on through. The one that moved through last night dropped down straight into San Antonio. This little batch of energy stays out there to the west of us. There'll just be a few of them out there. Not a real big deal. Tomorrow we are going to be on the uh, well, some clouds in the morning, sunshine in the afternoon. But then some models are picking up tomorrow night. Another cluster of those storms working their way down from northwest to southeast. Whether they hold together in the overnight hours, a lot of times these do. They get kind of a little mind of their own, and they do last overnight. So that'll be a wait and see type situation. But at least we are seeing more of these these little pockets, these little disturbances coming in here. Since the high has slid off to the west a little bit more, we get around that clockwise rotation here. Also, the trough up there in the Great Lakes is going to try and really take hold up there. That's going to try and push that front down in our direction. It's it's takes a while to get through here. Remember last week it looked like it was going to be Tuesday, Wednesday. Now it's going to be later on in the week. We get somewhat of a zonal pattern developing here, so that really doesn't push it down in our direction, but it is going to be hanging in the area. So one or two showers of storms out there, and then as it scooches in here a little bit closer by the end of the week, that's when we're going to have the better chance of rain and also lower temperatures. So 98 tomorrow. Well, I should say 100 again today. Real close tomorrow, 98, mid 90s, midweek, shower storm here or there, and then the better rain chance and some lower temperatures by the end of the week. Yay! Yay! We need all yes. the rain we can get. Oh, and then some. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just, I mean, it, it'll be tough to recover from the lack of rain. You know, been in drought somewhere in our area for the past two years. Yeah, <sighs> it's incredible. Yeah, it'll take a bunch. But we'll take what we can get. Keep for now. your fingers crossed. Yeah. Thank Thanks you, that, Mike. Mike. 820 and 76 degrees coming from all over the place. They're coming from the suburbs back um, back into the city. As more companies are getting workers back to the office, some are taking this opportunity to relocate. We'll look at some stats that's up next. Take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, five, one, four, fireball, seven, daily, four, eight, two, seven, three, fireball, nine. And we got some other ones. I can't read Cash that five. one. Catch five. Yeah, it is 13, 16, 26, 29, 30. And the Texas Lotto, 3, 12, 23, 25, 39, 48. All right, let's look at these Powerball numbers. I think it was over 400 million. 11, 19, 29, 63, 68. Powerball, 25. Power play two. Good luck. I a couple of bucks there. Oh, you did? Nice. Would you relocate to find a cheaper home or apartment? According to a new study, more remote and hybrid workers are willing to pick up and move to a new area or increase their commute distance. So in today's Consumer Watch, Jen Sullivan has a closer look at the growing trend. More U.S. workers are willing to relocate and say affordability is the most important factor when searching for a new home. According to a Fannie Mae study, 22% of remote and hybrid office workers surveyed in the first quarter of this year say they're willing to pack up, even if it means moving to a new metro or regional area or increasing their commute to the office. Why wouldn't you move here? The cost of living is low. We've got great lakes and waters. You know, we have beautiful seasons. The falls are incredible. Good sports teams. Fannie Mae's researchers say it's a trend that's been on the rise since 2021 among all age and income groups. But they say young workers between the ages of 18 to 34 are significantly more willing to relocate or commute a further distance from work than their older co-workers. With 30% of young workers saying they're willing to move further away, that's up significantly from 18% back in 2021. If they have really good high-speed internet, they're getting a flood of people coming in. It's a trend that's been playing out in the Lansing, Michigan area, with rent and home prices and mortgages at historic levels nationwide. The mayor of Lansing says some rural spots have noticed a surge in new residents and demand for new housing and restaurants. 
they're coming from all over the place. They're coming from the suburbs back, um, back into the city. They're coming from outside because of affordability. For Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. It's 826 and 76 degrees. We'll be right back. Good morning. Your time is 8.30 in the morning. I'm John Paul Barajas. I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, September 10th. Thank you so much for starting your Sunday with us. Uh, go Cowboys. I know they're playing later right. today. Had a big matchup against the Giants, so and a lot of people are looking forward to that. Mike, I know your team won on Thursday. Yep. Still savoring that victory. <laughs> Nines over the Chiefs. Anyway, yeah, it's going to be, I, I can't believe that football season is already here. You know, high school started a couple of weeks ago and college is in full swing. Obviously, Longhorn fans are just savoring that big victory last night over Alabama. 75 degrees right now. Really nice start this morning. You see all that sunshine out there. And the humidity dew point is at 68. It was down in the low 60s earlier this morning. And that was thanks to uh, those storms that went through. Dropped. Uh, just under four tenths of an inch of rain out there at the airport. Some folks picked up even more than that. And boy, it was quite a light show and pretty noisy late last night. And a lot of people are going, what's that noise? I haven't heard that in a while. 100 today. Yes, this will be day number 74. Will it be the last of the triple digits that we see around here? Talk about that in a moment. The aquifer went up seven tenths of a foot and the allergens. Uh, this is still from yesterday's reading. Mold is on the low side. All right, this is what it looks like as far as temperatures right now. Everybody with uh, one exception comfort at 69, but up into the uh, 70s. Normal low this time of year is 71 degrees. So we're still hovering a little bit above that. And now look at that 56 for dew point in Kerrville. Great. Same thing lost Maples 59 in Hondo, but then the humidity has come up and that's really, really humid air. I mean, you get those dew points right around 74 up there, Canyon Lake, as well as New Braunfels. So we'll see that bit of a peak, kind of a rise in the humidity this morning in toward noonish, and then it's going to start to drop down in the afternoon later on today. Mostly clear, pleasant this morning, hot and a scattered storm or two in parts of the hill country. Kind of like last night, it's going to be very confined and this will just be out in the hill country later on today. Then early portion of the week will be down a few degrees. It's going to be a real close call as far as hitting 100 tomorrow. A couple of storms here or there. Just one or two of them. Not a great chance of rain, but the rain chances are going to go up. Temperatures will be going down as we go into the latter portion of the week. All those details coming up in just a couple of moments. Sarah, JP. Thanks, Mike. San Antonio Crime Stoppers asking for your help finding this man on your screen. So police say that they stole from a pawn shop. Just take a look. Police say this man stole thousands of dollars worth of jewelry from the Cash America pawn shop on South Cross Boulevard. This happening back on August 1st. So if you know anything about this crime, you're urged to call Crime Stoppers immediately. That number on the bottom of your screen, 210-224. 7867. You can receive up to $5,000 for information that leads them to the suspect. And one man is in the hospital and another is in police custody after an overnight shooting. This happened just before 10 on Friday at 3400 block of East South Cross Boulevard. Officers say they found a 28 year old man with a gunshot wound outside an apartment complex. And as EMS arrived, a 30 year old man at Rocky's restaurant found or was found with a stolen gun. The man with the gun was taken into custody. Meanwhile, the victim was taken to a nearby hospital for surgery. A 40 year old man is in jail this morning after San Antonio police say the suspect they suspect that that man was drinking when he rear ended an officer yesterday morning. So the crash happened on I-10 West access near De Zavala. Police say the officer was stopped at a red light when the man rear ended them. The driver told the officer he had a few drinks before the crash. Pills were also found inside his car. It's unknown if the officer needed any medical attention after the crash. In the urgent rescue mission of an American explorer in Turkey, doctors and emergency workers now working to slowly raise the critically ill man from an underground cave 3,000 feet down. ABC's Marcus Moore gives us a look into those rescues. This morning, we are getting a glimpse of that first time American caver Mark Dickey descended into this cave in Turkey. I was very close to the edge. Dickey was part of an expedition mapping the vast Morja cave when he became suddenly ill, suffering gastrointestinal bleeding. The rescue operation underway as Dickey has begun his ascent from 3,000 feet below the surface inside that Turkish cave. 
Turkish rescuers now using explosives to blast open passages of the cave to safely rescue Dickey. Officials saying he's being pulled up on a stretcher with a doctor and three to four others to assist every step of the way. By now they've encountered uh, vertical pitches. This is the <laughs> Dickey appearing to be in good spirits, sharing a laugh as he waits to be rescued. Officials say they have split the cave extraction into seven sections based on depth, with one rescue team responsible for each layer. On Saturday, the initial operation began to move Dickey about 1,000 feet. If you take their goal for today and take how far he is, it would be five days. I, I suspect it's going to take longer. Dozens of specialist rescuers from across Europe racing to help, providing Dickey with life-saving care. Uh, but I'm not healed on the inside yet, so I'm going to need a, a lot of help to get out of here. That was ABC's Marcus Moore reporting. Now, seven people, including a number of Americans, are recovering after gunfire erupted in a Mexican city bordering the United States. The shooting happened in Miguel Alemán. Border Patrol agents say the victims crossed into Roma, Texas, and received medical attention. They add the group included Americans and a Mexican citizen. Investigators say a gunman approached several vehicles carrying 20 people and opened fire. The Mexican government is investigating. It's unclear if anyone is in custody. Well, new campus index reports are showing which U.S. colleges are best for members of the LGBTQ plus community. So University of Texas at Dallas, Texas Tech and San Antonio College made the top of the list. That means these schools offer activities and events to increase awareness of different LGBTQ plus groups and let and let those students match with roommates that consider themselves allies. And Texas A&M San Antonio is unveiling its new program, Jaguar Promise, to improve access in fall of 2024. This new program includes free tuition, paid fees, and a $300 per semester textbook, uh, textbook stipend. It will be offered to first-year students who graduate in the top 10% of their high school class and have a family-adjusted gross income of $70,000 or less. Well, Bernie District Council for City Council member Bryce Body is resigning from a position after moving outside of the city limits. So one of his most notable contributions to the city was his time on the community led Kendall County Bernie Fair Oaks Transportation Committee. His last day will be Tuesday. Residents wishing to fill the vacancy must live in District 4 and the filling process will start this Wednesday. Coco Goff has won her first Grand Slam title at the age of 19. Definitely an exciting match. So she defeated her opponent in the U.S. Open Finals. She's the first American teenager to win the country's major tennis tournament since Serena Williams in 1999. I told myself to just leave it all out on the court. I mean, I knew that it was going to be a tough match going in. And I was like, it's now or never. Um, it's your time. And that's what I told myself. Did not know if she was going to pull it off. She was down. The first set came back to win in three sets. This win was has been expected of her ever since she burst on the scene when she was just 15 years old and became the youngest qualifier in Wimbledon history. Also very humble and mature in her interviews. All right, the NFL regular season kicked off Thursday, and Joe Burrow has already made league history. The Cincinnati Bengals quarterback just signed an almost $300 million contract extension. Yeah, $300 million <laughs> wow. through the 2029 season. I know Mike's oh. up in arms right now. That makes him the highest paid player in the NFL's history. The Bengals will be taking on the Cleveland Browns today. All right, and the Battle of I-35 drew in the second largest crowd in UTSA history with fans eager to make sense of what both teams did in week one, with the Roadrunners dropping a heartbreaker in Houston and Texas State upsetting Baylor. Now, second quarter, we're trying to get you those highlights, but we don't think they'll be coming in just yet, but I'll tell you about it. In the second quarter, Rocco Griffin catapulted into the end zone for a 20-yard touchdown. The Roadrunners were up by 10. The Bobcats answer the call before halftime. Jamil Jeter stretches out for six, and they're tied at 10. Coming out of halftime, QB Frank Harris tosses a dime to Willie McCoy in the back of the end zone, and that proved to be the game winner. UTSA's defense or defeats the Popcats 20 to 13. The Texas Longhorns. The Texas Longhorns. Okay. I'll, I'll get this one. Take it away. Take it away. <laughs> they took the field to a round of booze from Alabama, as fans expected. But what wasn't expected were plays like this from Texas offense, throwing a bomb to Xavier Worthy for a 44-yard touchdown to take the lead in the second quarter. In the third quarter, the tide set. We can do that, too. 
Jalen Monroe finds Jermaine Burton in the same end zone for a 49-yard touchdown. But eventually, this was crazy, the Longhorns would go on to win it 34-24. to Big time win for the Longhorns. Now, Victor Wibanyama is still more than six weeks away from appearing in his first regular season NBA game. But he's already a fan favorite, not just here in San Antonio, but in the virtual world. Video game NBA 2K 2024 recently revealed ratings for every single player ahead of the season. And at 84 overall, the 7'3 Wimbenyama stands above the rest of his teammates. Of course. Hey, back to Joe Burrow. Um, did you see where Cincinnati has, because there's rumors that he is engaged to his longtime girlfriend? Uh-oh. It's going to break a lot of hearts. Well, a so a, a Cincinnati bar has a new drink called oh, the Sad Girl Shot. The Sh Sad Girl Shot. It's the nine cents, right? <laughs> yeah. It's nine cents. They limit it to one per Sad Girl. Yeah, so just, just one shot. Drink responsibly. Sad Girl Shot. But, but are, you are you taking up that shot or? I'm married, but my hu my husband's also a Burrow fan, so. Okay, good to know. <laughs> there you go, guys. All right, your time is 8.40 in the morning. It's 77 degrees outside. We'll be right back. Well, as your finances, are they in order or if they are a natural disaster, um, we're going to let you know what to do when a natural disaster strikes. That's after the break. GOP front runner back on the ground in Iowa after a summer of criminal charges. Will any of the Republican candidates emerge as close contenders? Plus, Biden oversees as an indictment threat looms for his son. This morning on ABC's This Week. Mother Nature has wrecked havoc throughout the summer with devastating financial impact as well with those recent hurricanes and tropical storms. It may be a good time to ask, are your finances prepared? to weather a natural disaster. That's right, and Karen Kafa asked the expert how to stay prepared for the unexpected year-round. Mother Nature has been punishing this summer, and hurricane season could bring more chaos before it wraps up. The National Hurricane Center says it's important to think a few steps ahead. Often people, when they evacuate out of a hurricane zone, they, they underestimate you know, how long it might take to safely get back into the community that they've evacuated from. And in the stressful run up to a natural disaster like a hurricane or wildfire, basic needs like food, shelter and water take priority, which is why experts recommend having a disaster readiness financial plan at the ready year round. To do that, FEMA recommends the following steps. First, gather your important financial documents and contacts. For documents that are paper only, take a photo and keep some cash in a safe place in case ATMs or banks are inaccessible. Review your insurance policies to be sure that they are current and know the range of disasters for which they'll support you. FEMA also suggests safeguarding paper and electronic copies of all files in safe locations and updating items anytime there's a big life change like a move, a job switch, or the birth of a child. If households update a plan periodically, it's one less thing to think about when emergency is imminent, information flow is rapid, and decisions need to be made quickly. Just focus on the information that is pertinent to you, your area, and that is actionable. In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa. Okay, Mike, 77 degrees. I know this morning early, it didn't feel as humid. Maybe, I don't know, because we had those showers overnight, but it's gonna creep back up. It is starting to creep back up, even as we speak. Yeah, the, the shower storms did bring in some drier air, but then we get a little bit of a return in the humidity, and some of the moisture in the ground is adding to that as well. It'll drop down somewhat later on this afternoon. We are gonna be on the hot side, though, still hitting 100 today. <laughs> This will be day number 74. We hit 102 yesterday, and that was a uh, record. And not like, uh, not like Friday, though. That was just brutally hot. We had so many great pictures of all the, I mean, the light show and the, the thunder last night. And a lot of people, I was like, yes, look, it's rain. It's thunder out there. It was such a nice sight to see. And there are chances for more of it, not only today, limited, and then as we go into next week. So or this week, I should say. Lots of clear skies out there starting off this morning. Yesterday, as I mentioned, 102, 105 in Catula, 103 up the road in uh, New Braunfels, as well as Gonzales. And today, we'll be down 
couple of notches from that. So hovering right around 100 all around the metropolitan area and somewhat of a heat index. Not bad, like I said, because the humidity will be dropping back down later on today. So we'll have a heat index of 102 here in town. All right, here is the long range computer model. Again, this kind of broad brushes things, but later on today, here's the chance for a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms out in portions of the hill country. And again, this has a big wide brush and paints it in there. So I think they're going to just be confined out there in parts of the hill country tomorrow. Pretty much rain free. Then we get into tomorrow night and we've got this northwesterly flow in the atmosphere. We're going to be seeing a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms. Some of those may linger into the early morning hours of Tuesday. Then Wednesday, a stray shower here or there is possible. Same thing during the day on Thursday. Then Thursday night, as the front lies closer to our area, kind of slips on in here, that'll be a better chance for some rain, and especially going into Friday as well as on Saturday. Then we're going to be clearing out as we head on into uh, Sunday. Again, the high, which that's the thing that's been plaguing us all summer long with the, you know, sitting on top of us, pushing down in the atmosphere, preventing any rain from forming up. Now it's just far enough off to the west. We get this flow around that clockwise rotation. That's that north to northwesterly flow. So that's why we get these little disturbances sliding in here. Gives us those rain chances, albeit not great. So that'll be the case today, maybe tomorrow. Like I said, Tuesday, Wednesday, one or two of them then really start to see the trough taking shape up there in the Great Lakes, and that's going to have sort of an indirect impact on us as far as getting a front moving on through here. But notice how these upper level wind lines are fairly straight west to east. We call that a zonal pattern, and with that, you don't get things just barreling on through here. That's why this front is just going to sort of be is just sort of lagging and just lollygagging around here. Then it's going to get a better push as we go into Thursday and Friday. So that'll push it down into the area and that's what's going to enhance our rain chances then also knock temperatures down even further. So we'll be well flirting with 100 tomorrow. It's going to be a real close call. I'm going for 98 tomorrow and then mid 90s through the middle part of the week. Again, a stray shower here or there, thunderstorm or two. Once we get into the latter part of the week and that front gets a little bit closer, that's when we will have temperatures dropping down and then also somewhat better chances for some rain. We'll get through uh, the weekend, maybe four or five days. Yeah. Brighter things, well, darker days with the clouds, but brighter future in terms of temperature. But all, yeah, I mean, look at it. When you got 96 on Tuesday, Friday was 105. It's I mean, that's, like that's 10 degrees. And plus, when you're getting that 10 degrees well up there into the hundreds, so that's going to feel a whole lot better. It's sad that we're excited about like 96 well, in my, almost air, mid September. Air conditioners won't be. By the way, the last 100 ever recorded here in town was the 28th of September. <laughs> but that was back in 2005. Don't right. You say those words here, Mike. <laughs> we're done. We're done. We're Thanks done, hopefully. That. Just see. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. It's 8.50 and 77 degrees. Tomorrow on GMSA, we will be live at the 9-11 Memorial Climb at the Tower of America's honoring the 343 fallen firefighters during the 9-11 tax. San Antonio 110 has consistently been one of the largest 9-11 Memorial Climbs in the world. If you'd like to be part of this event, you can register right now. Just head to sanantonio110.com. And check-in time will be from 6 to 7 a.m. at the Tower of America's Courtyard. Again, we'll be live on air and online at ksat.com. Okay, the driver's license offices around Texas are planning to reopen tomorrow after being closed for more than a week. So the Texas Department of Public Safety began changing their computer system back on September 1st, but they underestimated how long it would take to upgrade. So anyone who had an appointment between September 5th through the 8th and hasn't rescheduled yet, you're asked to email Texas DPS customer service with your name and preferred drive, driver license office for help. Also happening tomorrow, Police Chief William McManus and District Attorney Joe Gonzalez will be at a District 4 Public Safety Town Hall. The Town Hall is scheduled to start at 6 at St. Rose of Lima Catholic Church. It's on Marbach Road. We plan to live stream it on all of our KSAT platforms. That'll be interesting with all the shootings between officers and suspects wanted on felony warrants. So beautiful start on this Sunday morning. Lots of clear skies out there. We're already up to 79 degrees. Going to make it up into the mid 90s at noon. 100 again today. A couple of showers, thunderstorms off to the northwest and we'll stay in the 90s this week. One or two showers, but better chance late in the week.
Thank you, Mike. Thank you, John of Paul, course. for joining us. Right here. Hey, y'all have a good Sunday. Go Cowboys.